Psalm chapter 124 A song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem A Psalm of David What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hey guys, I want to welcome you to our study of the book of Psalms. My name is Raphael. I'm Larry Stout. And uh, every single week we get to dive in into the book of Psalms just to bring you the hope that comes out of God's word. Mm-hmm. And uh, today we're in Psalm 124. Um, and I want to welcome back, Larry. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good to be back. Thank, it's good to be back. And, mm-hmm. and uh, thank you for praying for all of you that were praying mm-hmm. for Larry. And uh, so, yeah, Psalm 124. Um, and this is what Athanasia says. He says that if you want to see, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're ascending and in this Christian life, mm-hmm. he uses Philippians chapter 3 and says if you're pressing on, Mm. Uh, to lay a hold well, of the great. reason why God called you and forgetting what's behind, use the sums of oh. ascent. Mm. So he says oh, these good. are sums of pressing on, yeah. pressing on. It's, and so, a, especially this song. <laughs> yeah, it's fitting mm. because of Psalm 124. Mm. Let me give you the outline. It's not going to be long because I, <laughs> it's not going to be long. Eight verses. Um, it's eight verses. Uh, and so, it's verse one to five. Uh, describes a life without God, mm, mm. Uh, a life without God, where the psalmist reminds the people that if God had not been on their side, they would have completely been destroyed. Mm. And so, and then he looks at he looks at all the things that are happening, and he's saying the Lord is the one who um, who won the battle for them. So, um, so basically, like if you if you're looking there. He says that the enemies would have completely destroyed them. Mm. Uh, but when you get to verse 6 to 8, it, it's a, what a life with God looks like. Mm. So a life without God, um, and there's, we're going to dive into that. Like mm. you would have been swallowed alive, engulfed, and all those things. Mm. Um, and then a life with God uh, is, is where the psalmist here, um, he praises God who has enabled them to go free uh, when when he destroyed the plans of the enemies. And so um, mm. the Lord is the one who didn't abandon his people, verse 6. Mm. And, then, um, and then the psalmist acknowledges that the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, uh, helped them escape the traps of the enemies uh, that they had set for them in verse 7 to 8. Larry, what are some of the things that stood out for you in this psalm? Mm. Well... <clears throat> It's good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and and my, my problem always is when you ask that question, I have a hundred things that are yeah. on my mind. But, you know, just, just to mention something about the Hebrew language. Yeah. Uh, that I think is, it, it, obviously we're reading it in a translation in English. Mm-hmm. But Hebrew language is unique in that they... Everything in the Hebrew language is is concrete. Yeah. Not not anything that's uh, like like for example, we would say um, something is beautiful. We'd say this is beautiful. Well, beautiful is an abstract concept. I mm-hmm. mean, what what you mean by beauty depends. You know, okay, you, I get an idea of what beauty is. But if I say um, it's beautiful to see the the um, uh, sunset over. Uh, uh, over as I'm sitting on a beach and watching the sun set over, yeah. you know, the, now suddenly now I have a picture of beauty. I have a concept of beauty, so I understand beauty, but I also have some context for it. Yeah. Well, this is this is what I, I love the fact that this is one reason why. Yeah. We can we can 
uh, people all over the world in every language can identify with with, with, the, with psalms. the psalms yeah, because yeah. it gives you these these pictures like here we we would have been swallowed up alive with burning anger against us a water would have engulfed us you know these are real mm. pictures and i can picture that wow that's that's that would be horrible yeah i mean this isn't just theoretical no i see myself in a really doomed situation and here's the other part of hebrew uh, is the fact that to to emphasize something they repeat it yeah uh, there's no there's no underline or bold print or exclamation points. Yeah. If the Lord had not been on our side, if the Lord had not been on our side, verses one and two. So it it's 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 really emphasizing that that thought by 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 re- repetition. So now I get even a, a if you will even a more of an emphasis on this this sense of those first five verses of telling this is a person who is overwhelmed yeah i mean it, it's hopeless mm-hmm. and to just say it's hopeless that's a word that's an abstract here is the picture of hopelessness yeah and in, in, yeah. in all its despair and yet now we get to the verses that, that follow it mm-hmm. giving us hope and that i think I, I, that that's why psalm 124 i think is so special because no matter what situation in no matter how hopeless it might seem you know that Blessed be the Lord. He'll not be allowed us to be ripped away. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. Uh, speaking of emphasis, like, I'm so glad that at least you pointed out um, this uh, verse 1 and 2. If the Lord had not been on our side, mm. let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side. And that is like, like you were saying, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, you know, Thinking about the Psalms, there's, for me, like, I wonder why there was no sailor there. I think it, <laughs> let yeah. Israel say mm. was almost mm. like a sailor. Like, mm. if the Lord had not been on our side. And in, mm. in Hebrew, it reads, actually, um, if the Lord had not been for us. Wow. Well, that's good. For us. And if he was in fighting for us. Mm. And and that's just like, it's, it's this... It's this um, very overwhelming moment where they stop and they begin to imagine what would have happened if God wasn't their mm. their their great companion. What would have happened mm. if God wasn't mm. their great shepherd? What would have happened if God wasn't their protector, their defender, their mm. um the one that was watching over them. Yeah. Uh, and for them, they're looking at that. And, and it's pretty interesting to see now how they finally, like they say people, when people attacked us, this mm-hmm. is like at the beginning of the attack when the enemy is intensifying his, his attack. And, and the, the descriptions there, uh, like you said, uh, are very just like amazing where he says that, would have been swallowed alive. That's a description mm, yeah. of ravenous beast mm. that that are so hungry. That has an, a, a beast that has been eaten for mm. days, and and it's hungry and mm. and so engulfed in by the water. That's that's a description of a raging sea that mm. literally like almost like rises and swallows you like swiftly, like mm. like you know, um, swept over by the torrent and swept over. Swept over is used twice. Yes, yes. Right yes. as well, which actually really but just again, like emphasizing. Yeah, you know, it's an it's a rising that just mm-hmm. kind of like it, it's like uh, watching. Um, I have kids, so watching the 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 animation Frozen. Oh yeah, where yeah. the the storm rises up mm-hmm. and you see the ship up top, yeah. and then all of a sudden it disappears. That's mm-hmm. really what like mm-hmm. this is what would have happened. We would have been ripped apart by their teeth, mm, mm. you know, and and that's just like a very vivid memory of like if God had not been for us, mm. we would not even have been like they they mm. you would have looked for our remains, we would have not been there at mm. all. Mm. But yet, really, at the end of the day, it's it's a. This is the reason why at least it ends with it. It's it leads to verse six, where basically they say, "Blessed be the Lord, mm. 
who's not let us be ripped by the teeth. Mm. The fact that like God is for them mm. and therefore, man, they can now be able to look back and say, mm. man, they, there's a blessing to God's companionship. Mm. There's a blessing to God's, to God who is with you, who walks with you, who fights on your behalf. And, and here, um, obviously, some, some say this is a context where David is being uh, really surrounded by the, you know, by, mm. by the mm. Philistines and right. all these things right. are happening. But yet God actually, it, and really like they take it to, to the battle where Saul and Jonathan are all killed and mm. all that. Mm. And they're coming now for David. Mm. And, but yet he says, man we would have been all swallowed. He's looking at the losses mm. of all the people that have been lost. Mm. But he's like, but yet because God is faithful, there's still, there's mm. still a way for us to move forward. And, you know, it's a, it's a good exercise, too, mm. because it's starting out, you know, if the Lord, I mean, obviously, they yeah. know the Lord's on yeah. their side. But, yeah. but just imagine, just let your mind go there. <laughs> I mean, probably a terrible analogy, but I've been married 48 years. And mm. in the more in the midst of forty eight years, you've had some rough spots. Yeah, and you know sometimes you think, you know, what would have happened if I hadn't married mm-hmm. this person? I wonder mm. where I. And if I allow my brain to go there, I'm thinking I probably wouldn't be alive today. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I, yes, there's been some rough patches, but wow, I mean, my life would be so radically different. I would have been. No, I, that would, that, I, I don't I won't even want to think about that. Mm. And I think this is what, if you, if you think, Lord, where are you? Well, just stop for a moment. Let's imagine you don't yeah. have the Lord. Yeah. Just, yeah. just go there for yeah. a moment. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa. I, uh, no, that's, that's, that's a worst possible scenario. Yeah. And so I, I recognize, blessed be the Lord, who has not let us yeah. be ripped. Going back to, you know, the great promise in Exodus chapter 3, where the yeah. Lord made that promise to them. Mm-hmm. He said, I am. I'm going to be with you. you. You're not going to be able to get rid of me. You know, yeah. I made a covenant with you people. Mm. So even though you're going to maybe go for, a, you know, go away, I'm, not, I'm still going to be here. And um, I don't know. I just think there's just something. I like the, it's, it's a different kind of psalm. I don't yeah, know, it is different. I don't know if yeah. we've ever seen anything quite this way of sort of a backwards way of looking yeah, at things. Yeah, yeah, and and like you said, I love what you just said. The fact that like this needs to also be a practice in our lives, mm, mm. like of actually like, and I, I put it down like, do you ask yourself hypothetical questions? Mm. Like, cause mm. it's a hypothesis, yeah, like yeah, of like definitely. of like, hey, let's go back. Let's just try to imagine. Mm. So the question for us is like, do we? have moments where we ask ourselves hypothetical questions of man mm. <laughs> what would what would what would my life look like if god is not if god <laughs> didn't fight for me mm. Mm. you know i look at that and i say one of the reasons why praise dries up why praise and worship dries up in our lives is because we don't make it a practice to actually go and maybe do mm. follow the, along the Bible that says, mm. where would I be yeah. if it wasn't for his grace? Exactly. Where would I be if it wasn't for God being my deliverer, my defender, mm. and being the one who, who was my defense? Mm. Where would I be um, if God had not fought my battles? I, and the truth of the matter is that, like, I, you know, because Jesus saved me when I was on the verge of suicide and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. really trying to take my life in each and every turn and mm-hmm. all that, I can also now be able to say, man, if it wasn't for the Lord, I know I would have not been here. Mm-hmm. But that's actually like what that does then mm-hmm. is that this is a fuel bomb towards the fire <laughs> of the fire of your praise. Yeah. That like yeah. when you look back, when your faith dries up, and that's why like maybe it's so important that this is a psalm of ascent. Mm. What causes you to ascend towards the mm. Lord with also just a... a, a A praise-filled heart is when you imagine and you're able to go back and you can be able to look at all the battles that you've gone through in life Mm. and you can be able to see 
behind all of them. The Lord who did not mm. let you mm. be engulfed, who did not let you, and he comes and he sweeps through and he mm. saves you and therefore leads you to that that place of actually praise. Yeah, amen. I think we don't look back often, so therefore and, our future is bleak. Yet and sometimes, time. Yeah. It, well, it even add to it. Mm. Lord, there were times when it seemed like you abandoned me mm. or... Mm. Looking back, why did you allow me to go bankrupt? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's it's funny. I, I just the reason why I mentioned that one is um, uh, when I, when I was uh, I was in the military, got out, yeah, and a, a guy wanted me to go into business with him, and it seemed like we had a great idea, a great yeah. business model. So I decided, yes, this will be great. I'll be um, you know have be my own boss type stuff. This is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, after a year and a half. Finally, I had to give it Things up, and, and yeah, yeah. It, it was just went south. Uh, all kinds of problems. Um, just basically, just just not enough money to keep things going. But anyway, mm -hmm. the irony of that, and it did. It took us years to crawl out of this. Yeah. We, we, yeah, it was just a mess, really. And I often wondered where was the Lord during that. But mm -hmm. ironically, as time went on, and I got into uh, sort of um, business management consulting, whatever, I had more examples from my, <laughs> from my bankruptcy than I did from my MBA program and, yes. and studies. You know, my academic yeah. studies, I had the mm -hmm. theories. But, you know, in the practical part, I realized all the things that you really shouldn't do. Mm. And I had learned painfully, but I was able to pass them on. And in looking back, I think, you know what? I'm actually glad that happened. That, yeah. that actually yeah. was a, a formative part of my life that I don't think I would have had to further mm. success later on had I not had that experience. We don't always see the picture, the big picture here, obviously. Yeah. But I, I really honestly believe that even those sufferings that we go through, those difficulties, yeah. those yeah. struggles, that at the time seem like the end of the world, mm. God has a purpose in them. And I think, again, Psalm 124 gives us that kind of confidence that, yeah, it might seem at times when mm. you might be getting swallowed up or whatever, yeah. but the Lord is not abandoning us. That's, that's the promise in Matthew 28. The Lord said he'll never leave us, he'll never yeah. abandon us, never yeah. forsake us. He is with us so that I have that confidence that even though it seems like, mm. like the, you know, the roof is coming down on top of me and the floor underneath me is collapsing, I mean... Even in the midst of that, he is with me, and I can have that confidence and believe that even through this, there's a reason for it, is a, yeah. and I can trust yeah. him. Great, yeah. great confidence. And it goes back to now having the confidence of knowing that even in your worst days, he's still doing a good, Amen. A good work. Yeah. Um, the fact that, you know, yes, he, can, he comes in and he rescues and he delivers us, but the fact that, like, he is still, uh, what you say in Exodus chapter 3, he's a God of covenant. Mm -hmm. That God who makes that covenant, and he says, when he says, like, like even Jesus said, I will never leave you, I, will, I won't leave you or forsake mm -hmm. you. Um, and, and Hebrews 13 says that, therefore, I will say yeah. God is my helper. Yeah. He's promised not to leave me. What can man do to me? Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty interesting when you look at this. This is what Charles Spurgeon says, by the way. Um, because when you go down here, um, you get to see, uh, you get to see, it says we have escaped like a bird from a hunter's nest. Mm. The net is torn, strong nets. Usually mm. those are nets. Mm. Mm. Um, but, and we have escaped. And verse 8 is actually just like, has become my comfort. Mm, mm. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the yep. maker of heaven yep. and earth. And in there, basically like, this is what Charles Spurgeon says. He says, everyone who is a man of God, belongs to God, mm. um, has, has omnipotence at he, as his guardian. And God will sooner empty heaven of angels than leave <laughs> a saint without defense. <laughs> right? It's pretty much such a way of saying things. Yeah, that's so says, beautiful. Wow. He says that you that have so omnipotence on your wow. side. And that's actually like what they, 
the, the scripture here is actually saying, but our help is on the, is in the what? In the name of yeah. the Lord. And that, yeah. that there, when he's saying in the name of the Lord, it's actually that the victory here is because of God and his name. Um, and that name of the Lord means his nature. The nature mm-hmm. of the Lord means all his attributes. Um, victory here is because of his power, his love, his mm-hmm. faithfulness, mm-hmm. his righteousness, and everything that there is. Like the name of the Lord is the reason why he, mm-hmm. the, he is being set free here. Uh, where um, it reminded me of Psalm 118, where it says that, man, they came hard after me, but mm-hmm. in the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. I cut them off. I think it's in verse 10 mm-hmm. to verse 12, where the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. What that led me to realize is that for a believer, the name of the Lord, the fact that we're called Christians, we're called mm-hmm. children of God, yeah. we're called children of the King. Yeah. For a believer, the name of the Lord is our greatest possession. Mm. Because if our help is from, from him, from the name of the Lord, and, and what, can, what can he do? What mm-hmm. can he do? Mm-hmm. And here the psalmist brings and marries him, who made heaven and mm-hmm. earth. And, and that's, mm-hmm. a, that's actually like, uh, and everything in between, <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. And so what can he not do? So omnipotence is on our side. And therefore, mm-hmm. man, that, what a great honor to know that like in the midst of all this, when, when the enemy, the God, when the enemy is coming after us, the God who is for us is not a puny God. Mm-hmm. He's a God mm-hmm. who, who basically like if you look, um, if they want to swallow us alive, mm. he has a bigger mouth to swallow <laughs> them. If they, if they want know. to engulf us, he has a bigger flood, right? Mm. If they want to sweep us over, he, he can sweep them over with even mm. greater vengeance. Mm. And, and he is this almighty God. Mm. And the beauty of this is that, like, to jump on to the New Testament, I think Psalm 124 is a great, great... Um, it, it's, it's, it's almost as if, like, once again, is Paul meditating on these things? <laughs> mm. Because in, Rom- in Romans 8.30, mm. if this is actually oh, trans- yeah. trans- like translated, if the Lord had not been for us mm. by our side, man, we would have been perished. Mm. But Paul now, after really kind of going through Romans 8, talking about the, the present suffering mm, and, mm. and the things that just seek to just like crush a believer. But then he goes up and he says that everything is going to yeah. work together for the good yeah. for those that love him. Why? Because, man, if he has done all this, like, you know, he called you, he set you mm. apart. This is what he has done. He has adopted you. If God is for you, then who? Can be against you, yeah. Like the, the the most interesting part there is that like who can be <laughs> against right, us? Right. And how do we know He's for us? For us as believers, as Christians, we know God is for us because He did not spare His yeah. Son, and He loved the world. He gave His only Son mm. to be, and then His Son. Right? How will he not graciously give us all things? Yeah. What did he do? His son came. He sent his son. He sent, he himself came off the throne to come and be our helper. Amen. Psalm 121 and Psalm 124 are fulfilled truly in Jesus. Amen. Our help came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Because John 1 says, yeah. There is nothing that was made that was mm. not made through mm. him. Our help finally came. And if he is mm. for us like that, who can now be yeah. against us? And that's actually what leads even to Romans chapter 8 later on, where it's, it brings all the, every single mm. torrent, every single flood that could actually take us out. And it says, even beyond all these like Psalm 29 says, the Lord is enthroned over the flood. Mm. He says that those who share his inheritance are what? <laughs> that, that now we are more than conquerors. We get to sit wow. next to him enthroned over the flood. 
that come to engulf us because of Jesus. Wow. Anyway, that's that. How can I follow up on that? <laughs> okay, I can't. I'm, 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 I'm speechless after all that. You know, and, and, and that last verse really, mm. really, really ought to be, we ought to just plaster that <laughs> yeah, on our head. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you feel like you're back into a mm. corner, when you feel mm. like you got nowhere to go, when you just feel like, I don't, my help is in the name of the Lord. Yeah. And he's not a limited mm, helper. Mm. He made heaven and earth. Yeah, yeah. So you got the unlimited possibilities of yeah. what is possible through him. And just, just to be able to park yourself on that, what you just shared, just how that all fits together. If we could just live that, yeah. how, how much peace we would have. How much, how much I, I don't know, just, just, just the, the way you would respond to others mm, and mm. and 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 especially the the passion you would want to yeah. share this good news mm. with others here you are suffering i got an answer for you it's yeah. called jesus christ mm. he can he can save you you can be you can be snatched from the from the from the you know the hunter's net you know you're mm. you're, you're you're in a mess right now and it is it is kind of sad where um you know we we find these people who don't know jesus and we try to share with them and they just can't get past the fact that that i don't see how this how he could help me mm-hmm. I, I don't i don't see it and and it, but it has to be literally the spirit of god has to come and and uh reveal these things and change that heart of stone to a heart of flesh to be able to mm-hmm. to, to receive it so um that's good I just i just but i i i i i'm i'm like i said i'm I'm speechless over what, what I just want to. Hey, I just want to thank the Lord now for all. And that I'm, he just I'm did. grateful. Uh, one last thing, I'm grateful at least that you pointed that because every one of us have to get to this point where mm. we ask ourselves, where does my help come from? Yeah. Mm. Am I looking to any other source for help, or mm. does my help, my help comes from that? Does it come from the Lord, the Maker of heaven mm. and earth? who has revealed himself in Jesus, who has mm-hmm. come. And, and Jesus died a death that we should have died, helped us now to now like be able to now live the mm-hmm. life that uh, we should live by yeah. pouring his spirit in us, dying our death. Praise and God. so that help now, I would say, comes through a life of actually repentance and faith, mm-hmm. uh, committing ourselves entirely to him and saying, I give up on trying to fight my own battles. Mm. You fight my mm. battles. And the tr- truly what Christianity is, above everything, is, is living lives that are completely yielded to him. Mm. Where no matter what, our, we try so hard to like, we're like those people that like throw our problems at God and then we fish them back. <laughs> uh, but yet really the core of Christianity mm is to live yielded lives um, towards him and just yielding when, uh, because he is our champion. And then at the end of the day, um, this is actually like where our lives now, are, we are not, no longer trying to, we live as witnesses of, man, like, let me share with your life, with, my, mm-hmm. with you, where God was my help. And, and I, think, I think you and I probably would be able to say that, um, you remember God being your help from the time you got to know him. And even to mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks when you've had surgeries and oh, all yeah, that, yeah. you've just watched God become your helper even mm-hmm. more and more. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we think he helps me to this far, and then after that it's me doing everything. Mm-hmm. But really at the end of the day, I think the essence of Christianity, essence of a life of faith is the fact that like he helps us all the way. And if I can right. add, yeah. John sixteen seven, mm. where Jesus was saying, mm. it is to your advantage that I go yeah. away, for if I did yeah. not go away, yeah. the helper, mm. the helper yeah. will come mm. and it would not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Mm. So we don't just have help. We have the helper, the Holy yeah. Spirit yeah. that is there with us mm. always mm. to give us that comfort of knowing that we are not abandoned. We're not alone. Yeah. He is with us always. Just like we need air, there's never a moment <laughs> where we don't need help. Yeah, amen. Right? Yes, exactly. Need, there's never exactly. a moment. That's so true. And, but yet, that's where the genius of God is. Yeah. 
where God is our helper. Mm. Jesus is our helper. Holy Spirit is our helper. Mm. And man, breathe that in. Mm. We are never mm. left helpless, <laughs> right? Yeah, so Larry, do you want to pray oh, for us? Oh, Lord, yeah. this is so good. I'm ah, just drinking in the beauty of your word and the comfort, Lord, it brings to us that even mm. in our struggles and trials, we know that you're with us and you are the helper who never leaves us. Mm. And, and walking us through during some, some difficulties and in our own personal lives, in our country, mm. and all the things that are going on in this world, Lord, that we've seen, that you have not abandoned us. Mm. And we thank you for that, Lord. Just may we continue to recognize that we are not alone. We are not abandoned. Lord, you are on our side. Mm. And we have that comfort. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Psalm 124. We pray this one was a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, please join us again for Psalm 125 next week. Uh, God bless. God bless you.